Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to talk about Arrhenius versus Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. Today's essential question, how are acids and bases defined by Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry? We'll start our discussion with Arrhenius's definition of acids and bases, mostly because you actually already know Arrhenius's definitions of acids and bases. I just didn't tell you that it was Arrhenius's definition. Okay, so according to Arrhenius, an acid is a substance that ionizes to yield hydrogen ions, or H1+, in an aqueous solution, meaning when you dissolve it in water. So this means that when you have a reaction of an acid plus water, you result, that results in an anion, which means a negative ion, plus a hydronium ion, which is H3O. Okay, so let's talk about how that works. So we have an example here. We have HCl, which is our acid, and we react that acid with water. So again, remember that Arrhenius says that when you put an acid in water, the, you end up with an H1 plus ion, so you can think of the H as falling off. And what happens to that H? It goes ahead and hooks up with the H2O, producing H3O, also known as hydronium. And the poor little anion, the Cl, is left on its own. So that's Arrhenius's definition of an acid. All right, so let's do the base. According to Arrhenius, a base is a substance that ionizes to, to yield hydroxide, or OH minus ions, when dissolved in water. This means that a reaction of a base plus water results in the loss of an OH ion. So the example here, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. Um, it does not say plus H2O like here with the acid um, definition example. We've got plus H2O. Here it shows H2O over the arrow. That's because water is not a reactant. It's not a reactant because it doesn't change. You start out with water, you end up with water, so you put it over the arrow showing that nothing happens to the water. Um, so what happens when you dissolve a base in water is that the ions disassociate, they, they separate, and you end up with a cation and, because it's a base, NOH. If you go back to the acid definition, you'll notice that there's an actual change in both the acid and the water. Okay, so in, in the uh, Arrhenius definition of an acid, an acid reacts with water to produce hydronium and an anion. According to Arrhenius, a base dissolves in water. The water doesn't change to produce a cation and NOH. All right, on to Bronsted-Lowry definitions of acids and bases. Bronsted-Lowry came up with a more general definition of acids and bases. So first of all, Bronsted-Lowry calls an acid a proton donor or an H1 plus donor. Okay, so why would we call H1 plus a proton? Well, hydrogen atom is made up of only one proton and one electron, no neutrons. So it's just a proton and an electron. To become H1 plus or the hydrogen ion, it has to lose an electron. All that's left on hydrogen ion is a proton. Thus, some people call acids proton donors. All right, so he, he has um, separated acids into three types. The first type being monoprotic. Mono meaning one, protic meaning proton. So a one proton acid or a one H1 plus acid can donate only one H plus ion. And an example of a monoprotic acid would be HCl. It only has one H to give up. Then we've got a diprotic acid. Again, di meaning two, protic meaning proton. So a two proton or two H1 plus ion atom acid, sorry, is an acid that can donate two H plus ions. An example could be hydrosulfuric acid or H2S. And the last type is the triprotic acid, which is an acid that can donate three hydrogen ions. An example could be H3P, hydrophosphoric acid. 
Okay, so those are Bronsted Lowry's definitions of an acid. All right, a Bronsted Lowry base, this is where things get really different than Arrhenius, is a, is a, is a proton or an H plus ion acceptor. Okay, so we're not talking now about, about losing OHs. That would be Arrhenius. Bronsted Lowry says it's a base is a proton acceptor. So um, what you do is you look, at, you look at reactions and you compare the reactants to the products to determine the acids and the bases. So let's start with this guy here. Compare H2SO4, the, the reactant, and the product on this would be this guy on this side. Um, well, it looks like H2SO4 to become SO4 lost an H1 plus, actually two of them. So he would be an acid, according to Bronsted Lowry. So now let's look at the water. Um, well, what happened to water between the reactants and the products? It looks like the water had to gain a proton or an H1 plus to become H3O. And Bronsted Lowry's definition of a base is a proton acceptor. So this is your base. Okay, why don't you guys try the next one? Okay, so we've got NH3. Look what happened to NH3 between reactants to products. It looks like NH3 had to gain a proton or gain an H1 plus ion, which means that's the definition of a base, according to Bronsted Lowry. And if we look what happened to the H2O, between reactants and products? Well, looks like H2O lost an H, H1+, plus, which makes him the acid. So you will note that according to Bronsted-Lowry, a water could act like an acid or a base depending on his role in the reaction. Okay? So, there you go. Bronsted-Lowry, an acid loses H1 pluses, bases gain H1 pluses. According to Bronsted Lowry, each acid has a conjugate base, and each base has a conjugate acid. Okay, so we call these conjugate acid base pairs. So there's the acid has a conjugate base, the base has a conjugate acid. Okay, so a conjugate base is the particle formed when an acid loses a hydrogen ion. And a conjugate acid is a particle formed when a base gains a hydrogen ion. And a conjugate acid-base pair consists of two substances related by the loss or gain of a single hydrogen ion. Okay, let's try this conjugate acid base stuff. So we start with H2SO4, and if we compare H2SO4 on the reactant side, look over on the product side, you can see he becomes SO4. And for H2SO4 to become SO4, he needs to be losing hydrogens. And that means he's an acid because acids lose hydrogens, um, which means his conjugate base is the SO4. You can also tell that the SO4 is a base because if you look at the reaction going backwards from re product to reactant, how does SO4 become H2SO4? He has to gain H's. So that's the definition base. Okay, so now the next reactant is water. And what happens to water from the reactant side to the product side? Well, he becomes H3O which means the water had to gain an H. So the definition of gaining of H is a base, which makes the H3O the conjugate acid. And again, if you look at the reaction backwards, the H3O is obviously some sort of acid because he has to lose an H to become H2O. All right, so that is how you do conjugate acid-base pairs. 
Um, I paired them up by colors. You can also see, if you didn't want to pair them up by colors, that this acid, those are, that's a pair, right? That's an, a conjugate acid-base pair. And those two are a pair. Okay, another practice problem. See if you can do this one on your own and then hit play and see how you did. So we have NH3 on the reactant side, which turns into NH4 on the product side. So to go from NH3 to NH4, NH3 had to gain an H, and gaining an H makes it a base, um, which makes the NH4 its partner and conjugate acid. And if you look backwards, NH4, we go back to NH3, has to lose an H, so we must be some sort of acid. Okay, then we've got H2O, and H2O on the reactant side turns into OH on the product side. So to go from H2O to OH, that must make H2O an acid, which makes the OH the conjugate base. And if we wanted to draw the acid-base pairs, there is one conjugate acid-base pair, and those two are the other pair. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good one.